My last video got video got cut off, and so I want to emphasize that in that last uh, problem I'm doing, um, I inputted one into the uh, equation of input one for x. I got two values for y. I got plus the square root of three and minus the square root of three. One input, which was the number one, gave me more than one output. This is not a function. And that's because input had more than one output. No matter how many outputs you have, if it's more than one, then you don't have a function. So I'm going to go ahead and go into the on your own problem on the next page, on page 57. I want you to go ahead and pause the video and try these on your own and determine whether the equation defines y as a function of x, and then when you restart the video, you check your answers. Okay, so for part A, I solved for y, and I got y equals negative 2x plus 6, and it appears that every value I put in for x, or every input I put in, I only get one output. So I did a couple of those, and it looked like um, by doing that, um, I only got one output. I didn't do part B yet. I'm going to go ahead and do that. So if you're already done it, you can check your answer. I solve for y. I subtract x squared from both sides. So I get 1 minus x squared equals y squared. And these are square root properties. So y equals plus or minus the square root of 1 minus x squared. And without even inputting in values in for x, whatever values I put in for x, I put a, a 10 in there, or 5 in here, or 6 in here. No matter what I put in here, I'm going to get plus or minus the square root of that value. I'm going to get two values out for y. So this is not a function because when you input some values for x, you get more than one y value plus or minus when we know why the function of x we can use something called functional notation and so in this problem over here, we knew that this function right here, or this equation with a function. So y equals negative 2x plus 6. We know it's a function. We use something called function notation. And this right here, f of x equals negative 2x plus 6. This means f of x. And how you say it, f of x. f of x. Basically, like the f of x, that just means your output or your y. So this is your output, and the x is your input. So the x is your input. If you see something with f of x, or generally it's f of x, but you see something like f of x, or g of x, or h of x, or k of x, any letter of x, or of anything, you do t also, but generally use x, then that is automatically a function. So they're telling you it's a function. Okay? So an example for a value of function, they're telling you f of x equals x squared plus 3x plus 5. When you see this notation here, it's telling you it's a function. So all it's telling you here is we know the function, and we're going to look at for the input. So in part a, they're telling you the input is 2. Right there. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and I'm going to copy the function down, which is f of x, this is part a, f of x equals x squared plus 3x plus 5. What I generally do is I know I'm inputting a value for x, so I'm inputting in here and here. So what I like to do is I like to go ahead and recopy that function and actually leave all the x's empty. What to do. And I'm inputting the value of 2, so I'm going to go ahead and put 2 in. Do a different color, do in green. 2, 2, 2. So what's telling me is once I put in 2, I get 4 plus 2 plus 5, and I get 11. So f of 2 equals 11. That means my input was 2, and my output is 11. Input 2, and output was 11. Okay? Let's go and do part B. 
And again, I'm going to recopy the function and just leave the input blank. And I need more room. Let me write a little bit smaller here. So f and then input equals input squared plus 3 times input plus 5. Okay. In this case, my input is a little bit more complicated. My input is x plus 3. When I do that, I'm going to go ahead and make my screen a little bit bigger. So when I do that, I might go ahead and multiply that. Remember, this is the same thing as x plus 3 times x plus 3. Okay. So what I get is I get x squared plus 3x plus 3x plus 9. And here, when I distribute this, I get plus 3x plus 9. And I drop down to plus 5. When I combine like terms, I have x squared. I have 6x. 9x, so plus 9x, and I have 18 plus 5 is plus 23. So f of x plus 3 is equal to x squared plus 9x plus 23. Again, my input was x plus 3, and my output is all this right here. It's all the same. Okay, and the last one I have f input equals input squared plus 3 times input plus 5, part C. My input in this problem is the negative x right here. So I put negative x here, negative x here, and here. So I get negative x squared, that same thing as negative x times negative x, which is just x squared. Because the negative times the negative is positive. So I get x squared minus 3x plus 5. So my input was negative x, and my output is this value right here. Okay. So on the next page, on page 58, go ahead and do these on your own, and you can check your answers with mine um, after you pause it and replay it. Okay, so I went ahead and put the answers up for part A, B, and C. And um, you can go ahead and check your answers with mine. If you need to pause the video, go ahead and pause it and check your answers. But I'll go ahead and go on to example 5. In example 5, we want to graph the function, graph the function f of x equals 2x and g of x equals 2x plus 4 in the same rectangular coordinate system. Select integer for x starting with negative 2 and 2. Um, so this is actually a problem that you probably had in your last exam, and it's, we're just basically just doing two different functions with two different graphs. So I'm going to make two tables. Um, one is going to have x and then f of x equals 2x, and then I'm going to come up with order pairs for that. And then another table where I have, well actually I can just continue on to this table, because I'm going to choose the same x values. But this time I'm going to have, um, I'll do a different color, this time I'm going to have g of x equals 2x plus 4, give myself a little more space here, I'm going to erase this, and erase this, I have a little more room. So I have um, g of x equals 2x plus 4, and then um, the order pairs that go with that. So x, y, there. Okay. I'm going to do everything in blue first. So here I have um, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. So f of negative 2 equals 2 times negative 2, which is negative 4. So I get negative 2, negative 4 f of negative 1 would give me 2 times negative 1, so I get negative 1, negative 2. f of 0 equals 2 times 0, so I get 0, 0. And f of 1 is 2 times 1, so I get 1, 2. And f of 2 equals 2 times 2, which is 4. Like that, everything in blue is the f of x function. So let me go ahead and draw that. Um, on the graph, so I have negative 2, 4, negative 2, negative 4, which is right there, and negative 1, 2, 0, 0. Oh, did, I do, did I do my math wrong here? I must have done something wrong here. Oh, it should be negative 2. Okay, so negative 1, negative 2, my bad. Hope some of y'all might have caught me. Like, where did you get that from? Okay, 0, 0. 1, 2, and 2, 4. And normally I would have you label these points 
on the graph. But if you have them labeled in your table, that's good enough for me. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and connect these points. And I put arrows at each end because um, this line goes on forever. And I, I only pick values um, negative 2 to 2, and I could have picked 3, 4, 5, and those points would be um, here, and so on. Okay, let's go ahead and do the g of x value. So I'm putting in negative 2 for x here. 2 times negative 2 plus 4. That would give me negative 4 plus 4, which is 0. So negative 2, 0. g of negative 1 would be 2 times negative 1 plus 4. To give me 2, so negative 1, 2. g of 0 would be 2 times 0 plus 4, so I get 0, 4. g of 1 would be 2 times 1 plus 4, which would give me 6, so 1, 6. And g of 2 is 2 times 2 plus 4, which would give me 8, so 2, 8. So I'm going to go ahead and plot the um, points in red, or the g of x function in red. And so I have negative 2, 0, which is right here. Negative 1, 2, 0, 4, 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 2, 8, right there. Trying to draw this, I can. You have a ruler. I can't either rule my iPad, so I'm able to make mess up. But there's my function. And I'm going to label this is one the g of x function, and this one is the f x function. So if you have more than one function on a graph, you want to go ahead and label it with the, um, the function notation so we know which one's which. Okay, okay recall not every equation of function. So we looked at equations before um, in section, and not every equation of function. So not every graph of the function. Remember, if you have a function, that means every x is paired with only one value y. So every input appears on one output. Remember, input is your x and output is your y. Okay? When we look at this graph here, you're going to notice that if I look at this graph here, if I have an input of 0, do you notice that 0 has an output of 1? 0 here has an output of 0. Do y. And 0 also has an output of negative 1. This is not a function because there's more than one output. Because each input, because input, not a function because input has more than one output. Um, specifically, input of 0 for x. So whenever you have a, um, an, an equation, you can look at and see if it's a function or not by solving for y. But if you have a graph in front of you, you can actually look at it and say if it's a function or not. And what you want to do is you want to look at something called the vertical line test, or vertical line test. The vertical line test for function, basically I'm, I'm running a vertical line. So if I take a vertical line, a vertical line goes up and down like this. And so I take that vertical line and let's say I draw it right here. So I'll draw it right there. Do you all see that it touches one, two, three points on that line? That, that tells me that this x value of zero has one, two, three points. The vertical line test says that if it's any vertical line, I draw a vertical line here, intersects a graph in more than one point. The graph does not define 